Ginga's reputation as a man-eater did not deter the Gagoju from hunting the giant reptile. They used to spear him from flimsy log rafts. Crocodile meat is a delicacy. Large and dangerous as Ginga is, he does not rule the wetlands. As the Aborigines say, it is Marawuki, the white-breasted sea eagle, who is the boss around here. When someone dies, the person's spirit is snatched away in Marawuti's huge claws. Marawuti's kingdom is one of the richest habitats, vibrant with life and drama. Watched by the scavenging goanna, Jagana, the black-necked stork, hunts for eels on the grassy edge of the billabong. But for sheer hunting prowess, none can match Marawuti. Out in the billabong, among the floating leaves of the water lilies, lives the lotus bird. The male lotus bird incubates the eggs and raises the chicks on his own. The female, who is slightly larger, leaves the male to search for another partner. Four weeks after the last egg was laid, the chicks hatch. Their father transports and protects the young until they are about three weeks old. Marawuti's kingdom is not restricted to the billabongs and floodplain. He also hunts the water holes along the escarpment. In search of fish below, he flies along a sacred rock face. Custodian of this sacred place is Nipper Gabariki. As a fully initiated Gaguju man, it is his duty to look after it. With him is Mini Gapindi. To maintain contact with the spirits of this special place, Gabariki must visit it periodically. It is yet another way to keep the ties with the powers of the dream time.
Minnie Gapindi has set off in search of food. She has noticed the tracks of freshwater crocodiles on a sandbank. Minnie probes the sand to find any eggs that may have been laid during the night. The Aborigines' knowledge of the country is so detailed and the edible plants and animals are so plentiful that only a few hours each day need be spent to find enough to eat. Gabariki has reached the canyon where the spirits reside. Although he has never seen them, he can feel them watching from caves and crevices. He announces his presence and asks permission to enter the canyon. <laughs> Gabariki's spirit has touched those of the dream time. He reaffirms a 40,000 year continuity. Juwe, the great bowerbird, is somewhat sinister to the Gaguju. They call him a cheeky fellow who steals your bones. The bones and snail shells, which the male bird gathers from miles around, are decorations for his arena. He has built it to lure a female. When a female comes to his bower, the male uses many ploys to impress her, even enhancing his presence by displaying his ornaments. Juwe's arena resembles the shelter the Gagoju build for initiation ceremonies. The bird also chants and dances as if at a ritual. He is the keeper of their secret ceremonies. That's his job, the people say. Garken, the brown falcon, has come to the grasslands. This is the signal for Big Bill Naiji to begin one of the most important aspects of the maintenance of his tribal lands. Only he and the other elders are traditionally entrusted with the task of burning the grasslands. They must clean the country, they say, but strictly according to Aboriginal law. Bill's son, Jonathan Yaramana, has come to learn just how and when the fires may be lit. Hmm. The time is right in the season of migrating birds. Animals of the grasslands have grown to maturity and can escape the fire. Also, it is a comparatively cool time of year, and beneath the dry stalks, there is still dampness. Fires will not rage out of control. The country will be cleansed, but not devastated.
If the laws about burning are broken and fires are set later in the season of heat and dryness, there would be great loss of life. The impenetrable grasses have gone. Soon, new shoots will come up through the ashes, attracting kangaroos. It will be easy to hunt and to travel. Jiuwei has been unlucky. His laboriously built bower was destroyed in the fire. but most of his precious ornaments have been unaffected. The day after the fire, he begins to rebuild. First, he moves the bones and shells to the new site. After putting down a mat of small sticks, he places the first uprights in position. Working for four or five hours every day, he has a serviceable bower again in about two weeks. Gundaman, the frilled lizard, is an example to all who would disobey Aboriginal law. When he was a man, he was smooth and sleek. But at a sacred ceremony, Gundaman did not listen and perform the wrong rituals. The elders punished him by changing him into a lizard and said he would be thin with a funny looking loose skin for all time. They said, you spoil the ceremony and people will see you like that forever and ever. The singing of song cycles is another important way in which the Gagoju maintain the integrity between themselves and the life force. Felix Ianuk sings the cycle about one of the principal creator beings, Injuanjua. Ianuk is the only one who still knows these songs. He said this would probably be the last time that he would ever sing them. Long ago, at the beginning of the dream time, in Juanjua.